Hi traders, how are you doing today? We go live as we try to do on Fridays. Good to see you all here. Hope your trading day was good. I had an amazing day today. Uh, just traded for four minutes. That's it. Four minutes. Two shorts. Doku, Domo. You're going to see it live today on, um, you could see it live today on our YouTube channel. You can join us every day and I'm probably going to post a video on that. So video will be coming out soon. How did you guys do? Well, I did uh, altogether $5,600 in like four minutes. That was a cool, cool day. Two shorts. That's it. That was my day. As always, um, as I always try, I don't always make it on a Friday. I will try to answer your questions. So if you have any questions for me, whatever, um, I'll be very, very happy to, to answer. I already see a question coming here. Why am I not promoting success stories of my students? Well, um, let me tell you this. I'm not in the business of promoting my students' uh, success stories. That is definitely not what I'm looking for. I don't mind posting my, my trading side, what I'm doing for, uh, for a living. But um, in my opinion, promoting students' uh, success stories that's um, that I'm not sure it's decent I tell you why I, I'm not hiding it I'm not hiding the fact that uh, most of my students are losing money in this business 90% of the people who are trading are losing money more than 90% so I think uh, my percentage I mean the my students percentage is better than this 90% I mean but we never get uh, more than 30% winners so I would um, do the best service if I would promote my losers and tell you why. I think trading is very hard. I think that people who like to trade should know how hard it is to trade. And the fact that I'm doing well doesn't mean that everybody else is going to do well. And I think that uh, if people out there are showing their students profits, I'm not sure that uh, it's the right thing for those who are being promoted in this way to join uh, the trading world. I think that in order to become a trader, you need to be aware not of the success stories, but of uh, the stories that lie behind the losers, behind the people who lose, the tough days too. I do post my tough uh, days every day live when I'm losing money. Um, I'm, everything is posted like on Monday this week, I made $9,500. And then second day, uh, Tuesday, I believe it was, I lost $6,500. So I'm still green, beautifully green for the week. I had a fantastic week, but everybody could have seen my losing day. And I think that if I'm just gonna post my winning days and my student success, success stories, uh, that's not going to do the good job uh, that I intend to do while promoting our services. We do teach people how to trade, but we should promote, if at all, we should promote our traders that are losing money, not the traders who are making money. That's my opinion. You may have a different opinion, and that's good. But, um, you know, everybody entitled to, to his opinion. Uh, what, uh, what is the best strategy to trade and indicators, Julio? Well, I'll tell you this, um, I'm trading, uh, I'm trading uh, gaps. I think the best strategy to trade is trading gaps. I think uh, gaps um, are probably leading to the highest possible volatility in the stock market. They come with a lot of volume. The, the, the direction of the stock that you're trading can be predicted. When I say can be predicted, my success rate is 68%. So I'm losing money too by trying to predict uh, gaps, but definitely I get more than 50%. So I think gaps are probably the best uh, strategy out there. And you can do that in the first one hour of the trading day. 
I specialize specifically on gap and goals, meaning gaps that are starting, stocks that are starting with big gaps, like today. And I'm going to post the, volume, the, the video. You're going to see two stocks. One is down 14%, another is down 13%, something like that. Both started with a big gap down and continued. That is, in my opinion, the best strategy. Now, in order to trade those gaps, you don't need any indicators. But there are different and other strategies that you should be looking at because these strategies are only good for the first 30 minutes, 60 minutes or so. And then you should be looking for more strategies. And for other strategies, you definitely need other indicators, lots of other indicators. These are the indicators people are using. But that depends on your strategy. Every strategy may have its own indicator that you need to use. Uh, so you need to adapt the, the right indicator for a strategy. You know, people often come to me and ask, what's the best indicators should, that you, a person should use while trading? There's no answer for that. Some strategies require pre-market movement. I don't watch pre-market. My strategies don't require, require that. Other traders uh, would trade uh, stocks that are gapping down and closing the gap. That would usually be stocks that are with a small gap down, up to 3%. That requires different strategies and sometimes watching the pre-market too. So you see, every indicator you use uh, should be used uh, with a very specific strategy. <laughs> sure, Tommy. Tej, come over here right now. Watch this video. She asked me to call her boyfriend. Is he here? Let me know. If not, I have another way to call him. No, he did not come. Okay, we need to make it. Uh, we need to make uh, something louder. Okay, let's go. <whistles> Is he up now? My dogs are barking downstairs. I will. I woke them up now. If that didn't work, can't help you anymore. What do I think of Stu Pazini? I don't know who is Stu Pazini. I, I don't know. Should I, should I know? What should we trade today? No, every day is changing. So I, I, I took the biggest movers I could find today, which is Doku and Domu and um, nailed this one, both of them. But every day is really changes. So if I would look right now at my at my um, at my charts, I could probably tell you what's moving right now. But you know, why won't you just join our trading room? It, it, it's free, so you can look for our free YouTube trading room. Uh, it's on uh, TradeNet's. Um, look for TradeNet uh, in YouTube, and you'll find the link there. Or actually, it pops up the live room. So you can join us every day. All of, all of my picks are posted there. I trade live, I share my PNL. So you guys can join me and see whatever I'm trading live. And now I'm talking about it afterwards and then I'll post my video. But the video also is live. You can watch it each and every day. What is the best strategy for you? Which indicators? I answered that earlier. How to find potential stocks daily before market opens. I always do that, Barry. Actually, watch my video today because you will see in my video today, the one I'm going to post in like the next 30 minutes or so, you're going to see um, the two stocks I traded today, how I found them. And I usually use my Colmex platform top 20. So that comes with a screener. My platform comes with screener. It's not only in my platform. You can look you can search online for big movers, pre-market movers, stuff like that. It does, you don't have to need to have a platform, but it comes within my platform. So I've got my top 20 in my platform where like 80% of my picks come from there. So the biggest movers would be there. That's what I use. Did I fail to mention that we're going to have a quiz later? And if you're going to win the question, you're going to get a $250 voucher in TradeNet. So, I didn't mention that? No, I did not. We're going to do that soon. I'm going to ask you a question, and if you stay till the end, you can answer the question, and if you get the right answer, the first one's going to win. 
uh, if I can share my mindset or my traits today, you'll see that on the video. You're definitely going to see that on the video. But let me just tell you this. Um, to start with, when I'm looking for big movers and the stocks are gapping down like 14% or so, what do you expect will happen next? I mean, <clears throat> a stock that is gapping down that much, it's not a stock that is appreciated or loved by people. It's a stock that usually, you know, you open up the screen and you only expect it to come down. But before it comes down, there'll be a lot of open orders to buy the stock because it's gapping down. There's a lot of people who are leaving open orders in the system to buy a stock that is down. Now imagine this, a stock is being traded at $20. The next day, it, uh, and while it's trading at $20, there'll be a lot of people who will tell their broker or put an order in the system that says, well, $20 is too much for us, but if it comes down by 10%, I'm willing to buy. So there's a lot of people who are leaving open orders in the system. These orders are usually being executed during the first 10 minutes. So stock gap down, 14% came over these two points where they wanted to buy. They have an open order to buy. These orders are executed in the first few minutes. There's also sell orders. These are the stop loss orders. So both of them can move the stock either up or down. I'm looking for the stock that will move up. Why? Because I want the buyers out of the game. And then when it reverses and comes to the point where I could short it, expecting the sellers to panic as it comes down, that's where I make the money. I make the, the, my money from sellers who are in panic. Isn't it nice to make money this way? Well, actually, <laughs> you know, I, I came across a person who, who once said, who once said that he don't think it's a nice way to make a living from other people's um, problems. Like you bought a stock for twenty dollars, it's down eight, it's down fifteen percent or so. And I'm making money as the stock is coming down. He said, I don't think it's nice. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's something I would like to do. That's his opinion. In my opinion, everybody is sharing the same game. In my opinion, if a person bought a stock at $20 and it's down 15% or whatever, he knew the risk. He was hoping it's going to go up. Uh, he's in the game willingly. I'm in the game too. I'm willing to make money as it comes down. Fair? Unfair? What's your opinion? <laughs> yeah, I has already answered that question, so I'm getting forward. What should you buy today? Well, I did not, I, I did, you know, I posted my long list today too. I didn't, but I didn't really follow that, that I had a lot of a lot of a lot of work on my shortlist so i didn't really follow that and again in just a few minutes we're going to have a short quiz here first one to answer the question is going to get a 250 dollar voucher so stay tuned in just a few minutes we're going to start that do we have any good books and tips for Capital with real estate? I thought you were gonna ask me about trading. No, I, I, I have to tell you this. I, I made more money in my life. I made more money in real estate than in trading. This may come as a surprise to you guys, but my hard earned trading money years ago went into real estate and tell you what, I made more money in real estate, much more money in real estate than I made in trading. My trading results are in, in my YouTube channel. You can see how much money I'm making every year. I'm making a great, let's call it salary. $200,000, $300,000, in my opinion, it's just salary. But my real money came from real estate, but I didn't really read any book about real estate. I mean, this is something you just grow up into. So this is something that just you know, I had the right friends and invested with them and then invested alone and continue to invest with friends and so on. So real estate, in my opinion, is the way to get real rich, <laughs> not trading. If you ask me, trading is a great salary. You can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I know in some places of the world right now, they hear me and they would say, oh my God, in my country, we only make like $500 a month. 
you're talking about $300,000 a year, I would be so rich if I had that one. Well, not where I live, uh, not where most of the traders live. Uh, usually a few hundred thousand dollars is just a great salary. You don't really get rich from that, you, you spend it all <laughs> and more. Um, so I think uh, real estate is um, a better way to make money if you have the capital. And how would you get the capital? My first few hundred thousand dollars went into that and ever since I've doubled my money every year. Almost every year. How much would I hold? How many cents would I hold uh, a stock that's going against me? Good point. Okay. Um, let me answer it this way. When, when I pick a trade, the first thing I'm looking at is how much money can I lose? Cents-wise, not percentage. And of course, end result is how much money, but initially it's sense-wise. Sense -wise. Meaning I'm watching a trade like, was it Domo today? I think Domo. I was, I was planning a 50 cent stop loss. So I took a look at the chart. I took a look at the volatility. I, I, I thought I knew what I'm getting at. Sometimes you won't. And I figured out according to its volatility, first two minutes really, but according to its volatility, I figured out that uh, it would have a realistic stop loss of around 50 cents. So it has nothing to do with how many cents that I usually take as a stop loss, but as it, it, it has to do with the behavior or the personality of the stock that you are trading. So if I'm watching Doku, Domo today, whatever it was, and I'm looking at its volatility and its spreads and the way it behaves, I figured out I have like a 50 cent stop loss. At that point, I'm trying to figure out what would be my quantity. Anywhere between 30 to 50 cents, that would be my usual quantity, which is usually 4,000 shares, depending on other things too, what the market's doing and uh, the behavior of the stock, how much I like this, uh, this setup and, and so on. So it has to do with that too. So I may, uh, I, I may use less quantity or I may even add as it comes down, add to a winner, never add to a loser. So it would usually be, my stop loss would usually be anywhere between 30 to 60 cents because that's the personality of the, of usually of most of the stocks that I will be trading myself. That would be the normal personality of, of the stocks that I trade. But I could trade stocks with $2 stop loss and less of course, but it has to do with the specific setup and the stock that I'm trying to trade. So, but I would say that the average, answering your question, I would say that the average would be anywhere between 30 to 60 cents that would usually be the average stop loss. And again, in like, I, I'm going to answer the next question only, and then I'm going to come to the point where we have a short squeeze and you can win a $250 voucher. Uh, do I have another question here? Uh, regarding the intro account, student program, and things like that, sorry, you have to contact your account manager. I'm not going to do it here. And I'm not really fam that familiar with the rules. How much do I hold stocks in cents normally? Well, that would be the, the last, <laughs> my, my last answer, and then we go to the quiz. Uh, you know, it has to do, the, it's, it's the exact thing as my stop loss. And let me go in a little bit more details here. Now, so if I figured out I have a 50 cent stop loss, as I mentioned earlier, my target would also be 50 cents. I always go for a one-to-one -one risk reward. It may sound too little for you because you read too many books. And in the books, they would usually say, you must have one to two or one to three or one to four. If somebody tells you that you must have one to two or more than one to one, let me just tell you this. That guy who told you this is not a professional trader. I would definitely suggest that you could 
you, you, could, you could definitely start with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. So if I was risking 50 cents, I would go for a profit of 50 cents, but I would try to get more. Like if I'm getting to the point of 50 cents and my first trade today was a great example. You're going to see it live in like 30 minutes on YouTube. Not live, sorry, recorded. Um, but if I risk 50 cents and I'm trying to get 50 cents and actually the stock moves faster through the 50 cents, I'm not waiting with a limit order at the 50 cents mark. I'm letting it move. And this one, I think I got like 80 or 90 cents or something like that. So I was looking for a one to one risk reward and I almost got one to two, almost. So you always start, in my opinion, you start with a one to one risk reward and if somebody tells you, forget about one-to-one, -one, always go to one-to-two, well, I'll talk about it some other time. Uh, that would be wrong. Definitely start with one-to-one. -one. In my opinion, it's the best. And then look for more if you can get more. And of course, I only take a partial, meaning I still have some size running and hoping to get one-to-three, one-to-four, one-to-ten. So that was the last answer, last question I answered today. And here comes the quiz, I promised you. So here comes the question. And the first person to answer the question, I'm sorry I didn't answer all your questions. I'm really sorry, I mean, we just can't do that. So next time when we go live, just uh, please prepare your question and be sure that you ask for the first time. Uh, uh, be, uh, be among the first to ask, so I will happily answer each and every question. We just don't have the time to answer all of the questions here. So, uh, here comes the question. I would like to, um, I would like you to answer. And the first one who answers the question is going to be the winner. And the answer is two connected words. So I'm looking for two words. That's the clue. Two words. The answer has two words only. Okay? If you're going to start telling me stories, I'm not going even to read it. You come out with just two words, you'll be the winner. Now, hear this. When you trade, obviously, you should be watching the level two. On the level two, there are buyers. We call them the bid side. There are sellers who are called the ask side. So let's just imagine this. The buyers are at $20. Sellers are at $20.05. So this is a bit spready stock, which we see quite a lot. So buyers at $20, sellers at $20.05. So there are several options here. One, and then you watch the time and sell, which shows you all the trades that are running through. And you will see on the time and sell the executions, right? So sometimes you see a seller selling at the bid price, which in this case you will see on the time and sell, you will see an execution, a trade that was executed at $20 because a seller was selling, let's say, at market order and he was selling at the bid price, which is $20. That would be an execution that is done at the bid price. And then you see the other hand, which is when a, a buyer who's very eager to buy will buy at the seller's price. The sellers are the ask price. So he would buy at the ask. Sometimes you see a trade somewhere in the middle, doesn't matter, 20.02. How does this trade call? Two words. What's the name of this trade? How do you call this? When a trade was executed in between the buyers and the sellers, what would we call it? It was done at the... Two words. You may lose a limit order. You may lose a, a limit order. You may lose a limit order to do that. It could be done with a market order too, but it doesn't, that's not the answer. I see close, close answers here. That's not the right uh, phrase. There's a phrase to this. No, that's not the right phrase yet. I've seen some answers here who has like 50% correct answer. It's not a matching order. It's not a market price. It's not a stop loss. 
It's not the spread trade. I mean, it is a spread trade. It's being done within the spread, right? But there's a specific name for that. <laughs> it is the inside price. Of course, it is the inside price. But that's not the phrase. There's a phrase to that. Between spread, no. Did I really ask you such a hard question, apparently? Is it possible that nobody's going to give you the right answer and we're going to keep the $250 voucher for ourselves? Seriously? Last price? No? <laughs> oh, come on, guys. In between. <laughs> you, you're now, like, shooting in the dark, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> uh, spot price now. Stop loss market now. In between. <laughs> nice. Nice try. <laughs> Bid ask spread. Close. I would say I would say this. Wash trade now. Now now. Range trade now. Fixed price now. Okay, Clifton, uh, trade and support. Take one minute from this right now. If we're not going to get an answer in the next one minute, I'm going to give you the answer. Not average price, not fixed bid. Just write down the 30 seconds, the 10 seconds, and gone. No bid ask. You're getting close though. I'm giving you some clues here. You're getting close. The one with the bid ask is getting close. In between, no. Pump and dump, no. <laughs> nice try. I didn't think that was a hard question, really. Okay. Gross, no. Balance price, no. Ask order, no. In between price order. It is in between, but it's not the right answer. There's a phrase for that. Dark pool, no. Market execution, no. 40 seconds left. Bid sell, you're getting close. You're getting close. Spread difference now. Just 30 seconds. Spread now. <laughs> Clifton, I think we're going to keep the inside spread. You're getting seriously close, Sam. Seriously close. Seriously close. Seriously close. <laughs> no. <laughs> I still no. Eight seconds. Six. Five. Four. Middle spread. Spread on the in between. Sorry guys, inside trade, very close Sam, very, very close, inside sale. Well, the inside was right, and then the next one was bid. The name is, the right phrase is, inside bid. Sorry, that's the answer. You obviously did not read my book, right? You obviously did not read my book, which comes in like nine... I'm trying to say something right now. Did you notice that? Okay, it's in Amazon. It's one of Amazon's best sellers. <laughs> and you're welcome to look for the market whisperer in Amazon. Guys, sorry. This time we didn't, uh, we didn't, we couldn't uh, give anybody the the voucher. We'll keep it for the next week. Inside bid. <laughs> some of you were close. Probably should have given you some more clues. Well, I'll try and make sure next time it's not going to happen. Somebody, someone will take the voucher. Um, really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you joined our, our, our wonderful, amazing um, competition that we're having right now. Just the last two days, today and Monday, world's largest competition, trading competition. Anybody here who joined the competition? No, sorry, sadly, no audiobook. 
I don't know how you do charts with audiobook. I mean, some, some people ask me about that, but yeah, have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Have a great weekend, traders, and uh, thank you very, very much for being here with me today. Yeah, sure, we'll have more competitions. Absolutely so. We have uh, very interesting plans for that. I'll see you next week, guys, and uh, be make sure make sure you join our live trading room. See you. Have a great weekend.